Hey there, how's it going? So we're gonna have to wait for some people to roll in for those of you who are watching on YouTube. This is a live pop-up class that I did on Instagram. So if you're not following there, come on over and find me. Um, I do them here because I can't upload long format anymore um, to Instagram unless I do a live video. So I do the pop-up class here and then I upload it to my YouTube now some of you on Instagram hey how's it going because people are here uh, might recognize where I'm at I'm in my apothecary shop which is like my house is on the hill my apothecary shop was built below it and I am in here today for two reasons it's already 105 degrees outside and I I can't <laughs> and my husband's busy cooking in the kitchen for my birthday that's tomorrow um, so I was like, you know what, I'm going to go into apothecary because air conditioning is better. Um, but I am here to teach you how to make a homemade bug spray that doesn't use essential oils. Um, uh, okay, so this is so, so simple. Basically, all I'm going to do, all I'm going to do is take some fragrant plants, chop them up, put them in a jar. Okay, class is done. <laughs> no, okay. So my choice of plants right now, I usually like to go with, um, catnip and yarrow now you're gonna notice that they look a little beat up <laughs> that's because it's been very very hot out i live in northeast oregon we're in the high mountain desert it was like 107 yesterday um so these ladies have seen better days but it, i wouldn't use them for tinctures but they're still perfect for making an infused witch hazel now i like to use catnip and yarrow specifically but i also get creative sometimes and the fever few has been handling the heat a little bit better now fever few this looks just like chamomile right it's in the same family but you're gonna roll it between your fingers and smell it and you're like oh <laughs> for me anyhow i don't particularly like the way she smells so i don't need a lot however all three of these ladies have something in common. They have high VOCs, volatile organic compounds, and the smell of these plants, their primary existences, the reason that they're making these oils is to protect themselves from bugs and other, you know, things like humans that want to come and take them, right? In fact, they even have all these studies that show that plants can increase the level of these oils they're making depending on if they're under attack. It's much like how trees can communicate from trees for miles away that these caterpillars are coming or that something they can even change their scent to call in other insects to attack bugs for them now they're not like putting out like an alarm that's like hey come help me they change their smell so another insect can come and attack an insect that's there right they're 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 manipulating the bugs <laughs> we should be aware of that um but anyhow so i usually just use catnip and yarrow but i thought you know what i'll throw some fever few in there too now I really like this for using up. So this is Yarrow. You can see only this one really has any bloom left. She's gone a little dry. You really wouldn't want to save her for a tea or make a tincture out of her. But she's perfect for this because she still has lots of these VOCs, right? Now, um, you might be thinking, well, I need to use an essential oil so it smells really strong to keep the bugs away. The plants already make enough that the bugs smell it, right? Your nose is not the same as a bug's nose. This will still smell strong enough to keep critters away. So basically what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take some glycerin. This is just straight up vegetable glycerin. And I'm going to add in about one fourth cup. Now the reason I do this is it's going to help us make a little bit of this... Uh, I tried to put that lid on top. <laughs> it's gonna help uh, keep some of these scents sticking around for a little while longer because the thing to know about VOCs is that the reason you smell them is because they off gas. That's why they're off gassing into your environment and you can smell them. That's what makes essential oils dangerous and such. Um, but I want to help that slow down a little bit so the smell sticks on us and the vegetable glycerin is going to do that for us. And now I'm just gonna take these plants and I'm gonna start chopping them up in the jar. It's not complicated at all. Um, and I'm not making a really big batch because I've already got a bunch of this made. <laughs> but I thought, you know what? People are always asking me about it. When I bring it up, I should make a video. So, I'm just gonna give a bit of a chop. I'm gonna push it down in there. You don't wanna overpack it because then you're not gonna have room for your witch hazel. You could do this in a gallon jar. This is a quart jar. You can do any size you need. Um, a half gallon jar might be more realistic if you need to use bug spray like 
constantly throughout the summer if you're not just kind of dealing with seasons like where we're at we certainly have mosquitoes and ticks but like it gets so hot it gets so hot in the summer here look at me i'm like there's air conditioning here and i'm like i'm dying from the heat these days <laughs> um it gets so hot here in the summertime that like a lot of the mosquito ponds like dry up and the ticks don't really have anywhere to be you know the grass has been eaten down by the deer and the cattle and things like that so we don't have a lot of pressure outside of spring honestly um okay so you saw me chop up the feverfew the catnip and the yarrow now I want to say, you don't have to use any of these herbs to make this bug spray. You could use anything else fragrant that's growing in your garden. It could be a lemon balm. It could be some sort of basil. It could be a mint. That's all in the mint family. But um, it could be lavender, which is also a mint, or rosemary, or anything that smells strong on a plant is literally meant to keep bugs away so it can do the same thing for you so you don't have to have the yarrow the catnip or the fever feet but this is the same concept right so now i'm just going to take some witch hazel should have had that open and i'm just going to fill it on up super exciting stuff <laughs> all the way to the top for the most part because i don't want it to to mold on me i'm not really worried about oxidation at this point but you don't want that plant matter to not be submerged now witch hazel in itself has volatile compounds so it is also going to help keep the bugs at bay it's why i'm choosing witch hazel over alcohol plus if you use alcohol although witch hazel has like a tiny percent of alcohol in it to keep it shelf stable if you use just alcohol like you were making a tincture what does alcohol do really rapidly? It evaporates. So it would actually cause the scent to off gas even further, even if you add a little bit of glycerin. So now I've got my herbs in the jar. I've got some glycerin on the bottom and I've got my witch hazel over top. You can give it a, a good shake. You could make an infused oil, but you can't add glycerin to it because glycerin is water soluble. Um, and now I'm going to label it. I'm just gonna call it bug spray. And uh, didn't spell that right somehow. <laughs> um, and then it's gonna be ready in like three weeks, right? So you can be done at two weeks, but I say let it sit at least three weeks. Um, what you're really going to want to do is sit this in a warm, dark place. I want this to get hot, but not like hot, hot, but you know, like if you want to like stick it in a bag and put it in the sun or in a shed that gets hot or somewhere where it's going to be consistently like between like 80 and 120 degrees for the next two to three weeks is going to make this pretty potent. And then you're just going to strain it when you're done and straining means to strain it. I want you to dump this through a sieve or a colander, anything to get the liquid away from the plant matter. And then you're going to put it in spray bottles and then you're going to spray it on yourself. Now, if you're using it for tick prevention, you need to know that you still have to do tick care, like, you know, tucking in your pants and things like that. But if you spray this on yourself, they're going to want to jump ship <laughs> when they jump onto you because you don't smell correct. You don't smell like they'd be tasty to bite into. You smell like something that's not fantastic to eat. Um, and that's the point of plants making themselves smell like this most of the time. Now, sometimes it can be to attract pollinators. It's usually a double purpose. Um, but, you know, with the pollination stuff, just to sidetrack, usually when something, a plant, is using um, their scent to attract pollinators, it's just the bloom. You've never been like, wow, this whole rose plant smells incredibly fragrant, like the whole thing, stems, roots, and all. No, it's just the bloom, right? But when you look at something like this yarrow I just missed a piece of, she smells like that the whole way through. Yarrow smells like yarrow, not just the blooms. And that means that she's really, really pretty much just using that scent to keep predators and stuff at bay. And, and for them, predators means like bugs and stuff. Now, it doesn't mean that it can't attract other ones that they've developed beneficial relationships with, but mainly it's like, I'm not asking you to come here. <laughs> I'm asking you not to eat me, right? Um, so yeah, I just take this and I spray it for mosquitoes. It works pretty decent. You do have to reapply it. This isn't DEET. This isn't something that you can spray on once and like in eight hours, nothing comes near you. <laughs> but I 
would argue that you might be doing more damage to yourself with that type of spray than um, than a mosquito bite, depending on what the diseases are carrying and what you're dealing with in your bioregion. But I mean, weigh the pros and cons. Do I just want to spray this like natural bug spray on like every hour or so? Or do I want to use like a known carcinogen? <laughs> so it's really, it's our choice, but that is so easy um so somebody asked if the glycerin helps preserve it for longer no it's not a preservative but witch hazel is pretty shelf stable um and it has a higher amount of alcohol than if it didn't right and so i'm not too worried about it i've had witch hazel infused like um face sprays and like bug sprays they're pretty good for about two years. And it's not that they go bad after that, it's that the herbal properties that you have extracted start to wane, right? They're not as potent, they're not as strong. People ask me about, about like my bombs and stuff too, and I'm like, yeah, I use it within two years. It doesn't mean that when that two year mark hits, it's somehow gonna go rotten. It usually doesn't because oil doesn't go rotten, it goes rancid and you would smell that if it did. But what really happens is the herbal properties that we've infused stop being as effective. But then again, I've got tens of salves that are like kind of specialty stuff that I don't use very often that are like three, four, five years old that I'm still using and that still work. <laughs> um, so it's kind of one of those disclaimer things. But that is it. Um, somebody asked me if I use organic witch hazel. I don't. You can if you want to. When it comes to organic stuff, there is a lot of greenwashing out there. Some stuff, it's really important to get organic. Other stuff, it really doesn't matter. Like when you look at alcohol and witch hazel, which is actually a hydrosol, so like a byproduct of essential oil production, it, there's nothing coming through the other end of the distillation process because things like pesticides or gluten or any of that stuff, it's all proteins. They're proteins, like gluten protein, pesticides are protein, herbicides are protein-based uh, chemicals, right? The thing is, proteins don't vaporize and proteins can't go through a distillation process and then turn back into a liquid. So it's all left behind. There's no gluten in alcohol, there's no pesticides in this stuff unless it's been added after they've added some other ingredient or something like that that might have it. So I don't mess around with organic alcohol because it, you're just paying for... It's kind of like when you see a sack of potatoes and it says it's gluten free so you pay five more dollars. <laughs> you're like, it was always gluten free, that was always a thing. But these labels allow people to charge us extra. Um, I added one fourth cup of glycerin to a quart jar. So if you were gonna do a half gallon batch, which is the jar size up from this, you would want to do about a half cup. You know, and you can wing it from there if you have a little less, if you have a little more, it's not gonna destroy it. Really, it's just there to help the scent stick a little longer so that was crazy easy right i just added some fragrant plants in this case it was yarrow catnip and feverfew i added one fourth cup of glycerin and i added witch hazel over top and now i'm going to sit this in a dark hot place for about three to four weeks and then you're good to go you could use it before then i mean if you're like i need something like within the next week i need it make two batches use one early within the week and then let the rest sit right and i should have probably made this video in spring <laughs> that way you're like oh bugs are coming or like late winter but you know, life doesn't always work that way. The plants don't always work that way. But it is so, so incredibly easy to do. And for those of you asking about the yarrow and the catnip and where to find it in the wild, check out all of my other videos on YouTube. They're probably here on Instagram as well, but they don't really let me catalog stuff very well, so you'd have to really dig for those. So it's just easier to pop on my YouTube and search, you know, yarrow catnip i don't actually have one on fever for you it's probably because i don't use her a lot because my body is like i just don't if a plant if you smell a plant whether it's something that everybody loves or whatever and it makes you just go <laughs> listen to your body listen to your body like when i was um really sick years ago i could not stand the smell of yarrow for an entire season. I couldn't handle the smell, it made me feel nauseated. And I'm like, okay, body, I hear you. You don't want me to be friends with yarrow this year. I may not ever find out the under underlying reason why, but we don't always have to know why to pay attention to something that our body is like outright rejecting, right? And so Fever Fuse is kind of like that for me. I use her topically, I don't like to use her internally. I'm not a big fan of her smell, she kind of makes me 
gaggy. But I don't think there won't be so much smell in this because of the other plants have a stronger smell that they'll cover it up. But the bugs hate feverfew. In fact, <laughs> you can take feverfew, one of her old school traditional uses is to gather feverfew and to put it into like your closet and your linen chest and things like that because it will keep moths away. It will keep bugs away, you know. Not everybody could afford, you know, fancy um, cedar stuff. And a lot of people just didn't even have the comprehension of having cedar available to them or what cedar was because it wasn't in their region. But feverfew and other herbs like her, like moth mullein and a few others, they would be shoved into all these places to um, save people's clothing because we didn't all, back then they didn't have the capacity to just get new clothing easy. You really had to protect it. Um, so, okay. All the people that are asking me why I don't use essential oils, I highly suggest following the link in my bio, or if you're on YouTube, I'll put it in the description here. Um, I have multiple, I have a write-up on it. Oh, and I wrote like a 200 plus page book on it <laughs> about the dangers of essential oils. So you can order that book um, or go through all my work for the past decade. I talk about it often enough. And I also have like a, a write-up post. I did that post like eight years ago. I probably need to do a bunch of updating to it. But anyhow, so if you like my videos, my random pop-up classes, and just, you know, me being a human in general with you, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, share. Sharing is important because it helps other people realize that they are smart enough to do this too because it is that easy, right? It was that easy to make. In what world are you not smart enough to do this? No world because you are smart enough to do this. You really, really are. Um, if you're watching this on Instagram, come find me on YouTube. If you're watching this on YouTube, come find me on Instagram. I share all kinds of things on both platforms you know because not everything's allowed on one and back and forth and whatever have you um and if you want to support my existence and my capacity to teach freely consider checking out my shop by following the link in my bio if you're on instagram or checking out um, my description section on youtube that stuff really helps me because it's how i earn a living um and i'm able to teach freely because of it so thank you so much for watching and joining my pop-up class and i'll see you next time folks bye